Welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you a quick edit. It is butterfly season here on the East Coast in the U.S., and I love capturing them in a multitude of ways. So this image, I'm going to get started and show you how I took it from this is the before to the after just using tools here in Lightroom. And then I want to take the image into Photoshop to do some cleanup on the butterfly. Now, when you capture butterflies out in nature, there are lots of scenarios that you're going to encounter. First, you may get some blur on your wings because they are in constantly in motion. And so I just like to embrace that. Sometimes you can even add additional blur to it to make it really look like they are flying. Often the butterflies have a little bit of tattered edges and you just have to decide if you want to leave it natural or do a few repairs. And I think for this image, I want to just, just do a few repairs today and I'll show you how I do that really quick and easy in Photoshop. Now next, you are often exposing for the insect and therefore your background may get a little bit dark or you may have some distractions in your background um, as I did with this image. So I'll show you this one. This was the before. And so what I had to do to get the after is I actually took the image into Photoshop and cloned out the background. And I just brought the rest of the kind of flowers up into the background and gave it a very painted look. So again, this was the before and this was the after. So in today's image that I want to work with, we are dealing with, I'm going to jump back over and I'll show you the before of this image. So you can see I was exposing for the flowers and the butterfly, and I think I did a really nice job of exposure on the butterfly, but we have some highlights on the flowers that are a little bright. They're taking away from this beautiful swallowtail, and we also have this very dark background. So these are two things we can fix really easy right here in Lightroom. So let's get started. And the first thing that I did with this image, again, because the butterfly, my subject, was really in focus, I liked it, um, I may make some tweaks to it, but I wanted to go ahead and start with my mask. And so using my mask tools, I came over and did a mask on these flowers this whole corner right here. And I wanted to do a mask so using the brush so that I could specifically see where I wanted the changes made. And then what I did is I went ahead and I went in using this mask and I made these adjustments. I brought down the highlights. I brought down the whites a little bit because the flower was very bright. So if I show you before, and after at this phase. So you can see where making that adjustment has brought down those two things. I also adjusted the color temperature a little bit. So we can see if we go before, it's a little bit yellow and I just brought it down and gave it a little bit more warmth. So I'm gonna undo that so we can go back where we were. And again, I'll show you before. You see how green the flowers are and now after, they're not as distracting to the rest of the scene. All right, so that was the first thing I did. Then I went ahead and I actually did a vignette. I wanted to darken the edges a little bit to bring emphasis to the subject, my butterfly. So if you come down to the vignette option, I went ahead and let's get that feature right here. I just added a little bit. So again, before and after, you can just see those edges and how that is bringing more emphasis to our butterfly. And vignetting is all the way down on your editing menu under effects. All right, so as I did that, the next thing I did is I went ahead and made an overall adjustment. So I'm going to scroll back up to our basics and I made an overall adjustment to shadows. So this was trying to open up the shadows in this top area. So I opened those up just a little bit, but I realized very quickly that I really needed to use a linear gradient to make that change. So I added my next mask, which was a linear gradient. So let's go to that mask number two. 
you can see as I added that gradient, it filled in really nicely right behind the flowers. So that's the mask. From there, I went ahead and worked on this background. The first thing I did is I opened the shadows wide open. So I moved these shadows all the way to open up all this wonderful color and detail, which I could see on my histogram is in my image. So I knew all of this was back here. It was just exposed a little dark. So I opened up the shadows. And the um, that's the, I did just a little bit of a brightening with exposure. So that is how I went from that dark background to bringing a little bit more life to it and making it truly look like it's out in a gorgeous garden. Now, the next thing I decided was to go ahead and crop it a little. So if you see before, it was just a little wide. And so I just cropped it to bring, bring a little bit more focus to the image. I then decided to add another linear gradient. So this is my third mask. And at this point, I just added a little bit more exposure to this center area. I wanted to just give it a pop of brightness so that it matches the rest of the scene. So remember, with the first linear gradient, I just worked on opening up the shadows and a little exposure, and then I added a second. So I think this is an important reminder that you can always layer your mask. And sometimes that actually works better than doing everything in one mask. So often I will layer those masks and that's going to give you a very soft, natural look. I then went in and did a little bit more work on a vignette. And that is where I stopped with this image. Now I do notice a little bit of noise in this image. I think I shot this in early evening and my ISO was only at 200. So I'm going to go ahead now and come down to the, let's get back to our basic panel. And I want to come up to details and I'm going to go ahead and click denoise on this. Now, if you've updated your Lightroom this year, you know that there is an awesome denoise feature that does just a great job. You can also manually denoise your image if you just want to add a little bit of a reduction. Now, this is going to also enhance our butterfly. So I'm going to see, see how I like it. I may want to take this off, but we'll go ahead and let it process. And it's going to take just a minute. So the other option, if you don't like the sharpening that Lightroom does, is you can manually adjust your noise. So that is where you can open up the luminance, open up your color here and impact the noise. So that is definitely something that you can do if you don't um, like the denoise option. So the denoise feature will add some sharpening and you may or may not want that on your flower subjects or your butterflies. So just something to be aware of. It can make an impact. Now this is going to create a new file, so that is something else to note. We are going to have a second file of this image, and it is right here. So let me zoom in, and we can see that this is the enhanced file, and that's what you will get when you enhance it. And I don't think the butterfly is too sharp, so I, um, I think that is pretty good. We could go in and consider Put this other one up here and let's zoom in and I don't see I don't see a big difference but I do see the smoothness now in our color so that is where I'm seeing the difference so I definitely like the enhanced image okay so the last thing I could be really satisfied with this image as it is I like all the colors but I want to go ahead and take this into Photoshop and show you how you can make adjustments specifically to a butterfly. So let's jump over. I'm going to click Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now again, editing your insects, your butterflies, even your flowers is a personal preference. Sometimes you may want to submit an image for um, printing, for a gallery or a competition, and you may want it to be really, really beautiful and sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background layer and I want to come over to my brushes and make sure I'm on a soft round just to get started. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do with this one is I think I'm just gonna use the clone tool. And I'm gonna come in, make this pretty large, grab the clone tool, and I'm gonna start at 100% opacity, but we may change that. Now let's make our clone brush really small, and I'm going to come in and just clone right where this other butterfly little, little petal is, and I'm just gonna slowly start cloning that to match. There we go. I think you would never know that there was something different there. Okay, same thing right here. I'm gonna just put my target, and I'm just gonna come down and clone that petal just a little bit. And you don't have to, um, you know, correct everything. I'm gonna leave that little edge. I may work on this little piece right here. I'm just trying to clean anything up that looks distracting. All right, so I'm gonna put my clone adjustment tool right here and I'm gonna come over and just clean up that little patch. Grab this white part. And again, you could decide if you like that missing. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, fill that in there. And this one, I'm just gonna clone right here just a little bit and maybe just fill that in a tiny bit. All right, so you can see the before and the after. So using the clone tool is gonna just be a fantastic way to bring out or fix anything where you just wanna clean up and make something that just had a little, little rough tears and clean that up to really then create just a gorgeous, stunning image. Now, another trick that you can do with moving insects, I'm gonna do another duplicate this layer, and I wanna show you if you have movement and you wanna maybe extenuate, extenuate that or make it look a little more um, creative, we can come up to our filter, blur, and I'm gonna do a motion blur. Now, I want to use this dial down here and I'm going to angle the blur in the direction of the butterfly. And I'm gonna increase that blur just a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna click OK. Now, of course, we don't wanna leave it like this. So once it's um, submitted or processed, we can change the opacity. We can bring that down and maybe even take it to about, yeah, 60%. We can add our mask, make sure we're on a black brush, and I'm gonna keep the brush at 100%. Wanna make sure I'm on that soft round brush. And now I am going to remove that motion, and I'm gonna actually remove it from all of most of the butterfly. Now the other option that we could do is let me delete this mask and show you another option. So there we are back at our 60% opacity. I'm going to add our mask and I'm going to invert it. So that's Command or Control I. That will hide the blur. Now with a white paint and our brush, I can add just a little bit of that blur right there on the butterfly to really express some of that movement. And again, I could reduce the opacity just a little bit so that it's just really soft and gives that natural effect. So that's a really handy trick if you have a lot of movement, some shakiness, and you just want to make it look a little more intentional, add some additional motion blur, play with the opacity, brush it on and off where you want or don't want it, and always make sure you kind of blend the edges. And I think that that really makes for a beautiful difference in our image. So there was before with our cloning, and this is after with adding just a little additional motion blur, which is completely subjective, something you may or may not want to do. All right, everyone, that's gonna be it for today. Just wanted to share this fun, beautiful butterfly image with you. And I really hope and encourage that you will consider thinking about how to enhance these images and having some fun with some creative blurs when it works for you. Thanks so much for watching. Please click like, subscribe, send me a comment, and I hope you're having a great summer where you are.